A very good evening aspirants. Welcome to Hindu News Analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy. Today is 11th of March 2022. Before getting into our news article discussion, we have a small announcement for you. We are happy to inform you that we are starting the next pre-fit batch. This batch is called as pre-fit rapid batch. The entrance test will be conducted on 20th of March 2022. The entrance exam can be attempted in both online and offline mode. The entrance exam time will be from 2:30 p.m. to 4:30 p.m. at all Shankar IAS Academy centers and online. The program starts on 28th of March 2022. In order to facilitate students, there are morning and evening batches in both online and offline formats. The course duration is from 28th March 2022 to 29th May 2022. You will be having a total number of 45 tests. This includes 3 mock tests as well. The course fees for prefit general is rupees 2499 and the course fees for prefit with scholarship based on the performance in entrance exam is rupees 1250. For more information and registration please use the link given in the description with this information let's get into our daily news analysis these are the list of topics we are going to discuss today in this first topic we are going to discuss about india's three stage nuclear program in the second topic we will be discussing about urban heat island and regarding the third topic we will be discussing about the crater on the moon and then we will discuss about medical termination of pregnancy act and then we will end our discussion by solving preliminary practice questions now let's start the discussion now look at this news article this article talks about the kudankulam village panchayat see a resolution was taken against the afr facility at the kudankulam nuclear power project site for storing nuclear waste see the afr facility here refers to away from reactor facility The AFR facility is used for permanently storing the spent fuel generated in the reactors. Now what is spent fuel? You know how a nuclear power plant uses nuclear fuel and chain reactions to produce electricity, right? And we know that the fuel becomes very hot and very radioactive as it is used in the reactor core to heat the water. And after about 5 years, the fuel is no longer useful and is removed. and this nuclear fuel that is no longer useful is called spent fuel so what happens to that fuel when it is removed from the reactor here is where the afr facility comes in the spent fuel is stored safely in the afr because although the spent fuel can no longer sustain a chain reaction it is still highly radioactive and has to be managed properly okay See the villagers are worried about the radioactive threat posed by the AFR facility to the region. They are worried that the radioactivity could spread and affect the groundwater and the drinking water. This is all about the news article. See guys, we extensively covered the AFR facility and types of storage of nuclear spent fuel very recently on 17th February 2022 daily news analysis and you can go through it. And since we cover this part very recently we can now revise about India's three stage nuclear program. See in 1950s Dr Homi Baba gave India a road map for the development of nuclear energy and he is the one who came up with the three stage nuclear program of India. We all know that India has huge thorium reserves and the thorium containing mineral is called monazite. See the AMD that is the Atomic Minerals Directorate for Exploration and Research has so far established 11.93 million tons of in situ resources of monazite in the country that is the thorium bearing mineral in the country it contains about 1.07 million tons of thorium here you can see the state wise distribution of monazite in this table you can go through it Here you can see that Andhra Pradesh has the highest reserves of monazite in the country. And to sum up, a quarter of world's thorium reserves are found in India. Here note that uranium can be used directly as a nuclear fuel in a reactor. But thorium alone cannot be directly used as nuclear fuel in the reactor. 
See, this is because uranium is a fissile material, so it can be directly used in the fission reaction. Whereas thorium is a fertile material and it has to be converted into a fissile material to be used in the nuclear fission process. Here note that uranium-235, uranium-233 and plutonium-239 are fissile materials. Whereas uranium-238 and thorium-232 are fertile materials. So this is why thorium cannot be directly used as a nuclear fuel and it must be converted into uranium-233 to be used as a fuel. And this is where India's three-stage nuclear program comes into picture. Now let's see the three stages of India's nuclear program one by one. First, let's see the first stage. See, the first stage involves the creation of a fleet of pressurized heavy water reactors. It uses natural uranium that is uranium-238 to produce energy and plutonium as a byproduct. Since the natural uranium is used here, there is no need for enrichment. Note that in India, pressurized heavy water reactor is located in Kakrapar Atomic Power Station in Gujarat. Now moving on to the second stage. See the second stage would see the setting up of several fast breeder reactors that is FBRs. If you see these fast breeder reactors would use a mixer of plutonium and the reprocessed spent uranium from the first stage as a fuel. That is, it will use the mixture of plutonium and spent uranium. This will produce energy that is electricity and it also produce more plutonium as the uranium will get converted into plutonium. Note here that the fast breeder reactors does not use moderators. In a nuclear reactor, the moderator helps slow down the neutrons. And only by slowing down the neutrons, the fission reaction in the nuclear reactor is sustained. See, in fast breeder reactor, there is no need to slow down the neutron because fast neutrons are more efficient in transmuting uranium-238 to plutonium-239. Now look at this image. As I already said, the fast breeder reactor uses a mixture of plutonium and the reprocessed spent uranium from the first stage as a fuel. And in this, the plutonium-239 is used to sustain the reaction. The nuclear reaction produces energy and the fast moving neutrons. And these fast moving neutrons are made to bombard the spent uranium that is uranium-238. See, we already saw that uranium-238 is fertile and not fissile. And after the fast neutron bombard uranium-238, it is transmuted into plutonium-239. And this plutonium-239 is a fissile material. And through this process, the fast breeder reactor produces more plutonium than it consumes. That is why it is called breeder reactor. The surplus plutonium bred in each fast reactor can be used to set up more such reactors in our country. Once sufficient inventory of plutonium-239 is produced, thorium that is abundant in our country can be introduced as a blanket material in the reactor. Now the fast neutron, when bombarded into the fertile thorium-232, converts it into uranium-233. And the uranium-233 is fissile and it is used as a fuel in the third stage of our nuclear program. See, India has a prototype fast breeder reactor in Madras Atomic Power Station at Kalpakam near Chennai. Now coming to the third stage. See here, the third stage uses the advanced heavy water reactor. This advanced heavy water reactor uses thorium-232 mixed with uranium-233 produced in the second stage in the form of mixed oxide as a fuel. Here the overall design of the advanced heavy water reactor is to utilize large amounts of thorium reserves found in India. So through these three stages, India aims to be self-sufficient in nuclear energy. Now we will do a quick recap. We have seen that a quarter of the world's thorium reserves are found in India. Also, we have seen that uranium can be directly used as a nuclear fuel in a reactor, but thorium alone cannot be directly used as a nuclear fuel. Then we saw that uranium-235, uranium-233 and plutonium-239 are fissile material, whereas uranium-238 and thorium-232 are fertile material. Then we have covered about 
India's three stage nuclear program which is very important the first stage involves the creation of a fleet of pressurized heavy water reactors which use natural uranium that is uranium 238 to produce energy and plutonium as a byproduct and the second stage is the setting up of fast breeder reactors the fast breeder reactors would use a mixture of plutonium and the reprocessed spent uranium from the first stage as a fuel this will produce electricity and more plutonium as the uranium will get converted into plutonium now the third stage uses the advanced heavy water reactor the advanced heavy water reactor uses thorium 232 mixed with uranium 233 produced in the second stage in the form of mixed oxide as a fuel and through these three stages india aims to be self sufficient in nuclear energy and that's all regarding this news article now we will move on to next news article discussion look at this news article this news article talks about the key findings of a study titled monitoring spatio temporal dynamics of urban and peri urban land transitions see this is a case study of chennai metropolitan area and this is done by the center for water resources of anna university The key findings is that the impact of urban sprawl is felt in the city suburban areas. The reason for this is the decadal changes in land use and urban sprawl. See this has led to warmer temperature and increasing urban heat island effect spreading to peri urban landscape. In this context let's discuss about the urban heat island in detail. Now first of all what is mean by urban heat island effect See it is a phenomenon whereby cities experience higher air temperature than the surrounding countryside and this effect can be quite noticeable on average cities tend to be 1 to 7 degree fahrenheit warmer during the daytime and this difference continues well into the night during which cities can still be as much as 5 degree fahrenheit warmer than the areas around them and note that scientists refer these areas afflicted by these higher temperatures as urban heat islands now let's see the causes of urban heat island see the main cause is that the replacement of natural surfaces like trees ponds and soil by new developments such as roads and buildings and this change is due to the growth of the cities this results in a corresponding change in the local climate because these natural surfaces help moderate the air temperatures right for example trees and other plants can lower air temperatures by providing the shade this vegetation along with soil and water helps to cool down nearby air through evaporative cooling This evaporative cooling is a natural process by which evaporating water absorbs heat. But the man-made surfaces that replaces these features does not have cooling effects. Instead, they tend to absorb and re-emit more heat which makes the surrounding warmer. Most of the heat comes from the sunlight and there is also another source of heat. This heat is due to the human activities like power generation and the use of cars and air conditioners. The geometry of the cities can also contribute to heat islands. See, the narrow spaces between tall structures known as urban canyons can block the wind and trap heat, right? Now let's see what are all the risks caused due to this urban heat island. Firstly, they can pose significant health risk. What are they? See the high air temperature and intensifying heat waves can cause heat stroke and heat exhaustion. Not only this, it might even cause heart attacks. Secondly, heat islands can harm the environment. But how? See, to cope up with higher temperature, cars and buildings consume more energy via air conditioners. This further worsens the air pollution and contributes to climate change. So far we have seen the causes and effects of urban heat island. Now we will see how to fight the urban heat island effect. Firstly, we have to reintroduce vegetation. See, cities can expand parkland and plant the trees and install green roofs which are designed to harbor plant life. One study found that the presence of vegetation can lower nearby air temperature 
by as much as around 4 degree fahrenheit secondly we have to build cool roofs and pavements see cool roofs feature bright coatings that reflect more sunlight therefore it absorbs less heat then you take the cool pavements they work similar to cool roofs see cool pavements are made of brighter materials like concrete and light color aggregates or they have been treated with reflective coatings thus the urban heat islands are one of the most pressing issues faced by the cities today due to the urban heat island residents are feeling the heat hence environment friendly approaches can help the cities keep their cool even during the climate change see in this discussion we have discussed about what is meant by urban heat island effect it is a phenomena whereby cities experience higher air temperature than the surrounding countryside then we have seen the causes and risk posed by urban heat island mainly the replacement of natural surfaces like trees ponds and soil by new development projects such as roads and buildings contributes to urban heat island and they pose a significant health risk including heart attacks and lastly we have seen some of the ways to fight the risk posed by urban heat island the first way is to reintroduce vegetation and the second way is by building cool roofs and cool pavements that's all about this news article now we will move on to the next news article discussion look at this news article this news article is taken from the text and context page and it talks about the newest crater on the moon and this crater is created after a space junk hit the moon see according to astronomer gray this is the first recorded unintentional case of a space junk hitting the moon in this context let's discuss about what is a crater and the difference between the crater on the earth and the moon then we will see what is a space junk and how it creates a crater on the moon okay before that the syllabus relevant to this article is highlighted here for your reference you can go through it now first of all what is a crater see a crater is nothing but a bowl shaped depression and it may be produced by the impact of a meteorite or a volcanic activity or an explosion in other words a crater is a roundish dent left in the surface of something by the impact of something else for example look at these images of a moon these are the craters created in the moon due to the impacts over million of years now let's see about the difference between the crater on the earth and the crater on the moon see the crater on earth has processes that can erase almost all evidence of past impacts but when you take the crater on the moon pretty much any tiny dent made on the surface is going to stay there see three process help the earth to keep its surface crater free the first process is called erosion see the earth has weather water and plants and these weather water and plants act together to break apart and wear down the ground eventually erosion can break a crater down to virtually nothing when you take the moon it has almost no erosion because it has no atmosphere that means it has no wind it has no weather and it certainly has no plants almost nothing can remove marks on its surface once they are made now the second process it is called tectonics tectonics are processes that can cause our planet surface to form new rocks and to get rid of old rocks and because of tectonics the surface of the earth is recycled many times throughout its long history and when you take the moon the tectonics are absent hence on the moon's surface there will be no formation of new rocks or a shift in the existing surface patterns okay now the third process it is called volcanism see the volcanic flows can cover up impact craters this is a major way in which the impact craters gets covered up and when you take the moon it has been without volcanism for around 3 billion years hence it is impossible for craters on the moon to be covered so far we have seen about the craters and the difference between the craters on the moon and the craters on the earth Now let's see what is a space junk and how it creates a crater on the moon. See, a space junk or a space debris is any piece of machinery or debris left by humans in space. 
it can refer to big objects such as dead satellites that have failed or been left in the orbit at the end of their mission and it can also refer to smaller things like a bit of debris or a paint flakes that have fallen off from a rocket see some human made junk has been left on the moon too now how does the space junk get into space see almost all space junk is the result of us launching objects from the earth and it remains in the orbit until it re enters the atmosphere okay here some objects in the lower orbits of a few hundred kilometers can return quickly that is they often re enter the atmosphere after a few years and for the most part they will burn up so they don't even reach the ground but see the debris or satellites left at a higher altitude can continue to circle earth for hundreds or even thousands of years and some space junks results from collisions are anti satellite test in the orbit see when two satellites collide they can smash apart into thousands of new pieces creating a lot of new debris and several countries including the usa china and india have used the missiles to blow up their own satellites and this creates a thousands of new pieces of dangerous debris now let's briefly see about the new crater on the moon that is mentioned in this news article see a leftover piece of a spacecraft was flying through the space reportedly and it hit the surface of the moon last friday thus it created a new crater in the moon and this crater may be around 65 feet wide and this piece of a space junk was earlier believed to be a space x rocket but was later said to be the third stage booster of Chang'e 5 T1 This Chang'e 5 T1 is a lunar mission launched by the China National Space Administration in 2014 However China denied the responsibility The reason given by China is that the third stage booster of Chang'e 5 T1 safely entered the earth atmosphere and was completely incinerated But according to astronomer Gray it resembles the Chinese rocket and not that of a SpaceX This was even confirmed by a team at the University of Arizona. Now we will do a quick recap. Firstly, we saw about the crater. Crater is nothing but a bowl-shaped depression produced by the impact of a meteorite or volcanic activity or explosion. Then we have seen about space junks. It is a piece of a machinery or debris left by humans in space. it can refer to big objects such as dead satellites that have failed or been left in the orbit at the end of their mission it can also refer to smaller things like a bit of a debris or paint flakes that have fallen off from a rocket then we saw about a space junk mentioned in the news the piece of a space junk was earlier believed to be a space x rocket but was later said to be the third stage booster of chang'e 5 t1 This is a lunar mission launched by China National Space Administration in 2014 but China has denied the responsibility and that's all regarding this news article now we will move on to next news article discussion look at this news article the kerala high court on thursday asked the health authorities to take appropriate decision on the pregnancy of a 10 year old rape survivor The High Court directed the health authorities to take action in accordance with the Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act. In this context, let's see some important points about the Medical Termination of Pregnancy Amendment Act 2021. See, India has a separate legislation to regulate the termination of pregnancy or abortion. In India, abortion was regulated using the Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act. 1971 This act was enacted in India to reduce the mortality that is associated with unsafe abortions in the country Here the unsafe abortion is defined as a procedure that is performed by persons who lack necessary skills or procedure that is performed in an environment that lacks minimum medical standards or both So the MTP Act 1971 entitles women to have access to safe abortion services under certain specific conditions. The MTP Act lays down the criteria for which a pregnancy can be terminated. See this MTP Act 1971 was amended last year. This amendment made some key changes. 
let's see the changes one by one See the first major change is the increase in the upper limit for the legal termination of pregnancy. According to the latest amendment, the upper limit for termination of pregnancy has been increased from 20 to 24 weeks for certain category of women. According to the medical termination of pregnancy amendment rules 2021, these categories include survivors of sexual assault or rape or incest. minors and women whose marital status changes during an ongoing pregnancy that is women who are widowed or divorced during pregnancy and finally this category include women with physical disabilities the second major change is regarding the requirement of opinion of medical practitioners or doctors earlier abortion required the opinion of one doctor if it is done within 12 weeks of conception and two doctors if it is done between 12 and 20 weeks after the amendment the opinion of one doctor was needed for the termination of pregnancy up to 20 weeks of gestation for termination of pregnancy from 20 weeks to 24 weeks of gestation the opinion of two doctors are required now the next major change is regarding the fetuses with substantial abnormalities The amendment removed the upper limit in cases of substantial fetal abnormalities. According to the changes made through the amendment, a state level medical board will be set up to decide if a pregnancy may be terminated after 24 weeks in cases of fetal malfunction. Now the medical board will also examine the woman and her reports if she approaches for medical termination of pregnancy. After the examination the medical board will provide its opinion with regard to the termination of pregnancy see here the medical board can also reject the request for termination within 3 days of receiving the request the next change made by the amendment is the change in regards to confidentiality clauses the new amendment made sure that the name and other particulars of a woman whose pregnancy has been terminated cannot be revealed except to a person authorized by law the mtp act 1971 had only a provision for fine up to 1000 rupees in case of breach of confidentiality after the amendment the punishment for breach of confidentiality can be a fine or imprisonment up to 1 year or both Now finally the change is in regards to termination of pregnancy due to failure of contraceptive method or device see earlier only married women can apply for termination of pregnancy due to failure of contraceptive devices after this amendment it is extended even to unmarried women so after the amendment both married and unmarried women can have access to termination of pregnancy in case of failure of contraceptive methods it is up to 20 weeks of gestation these are some of the major changes introduced by the medical termination of pregnancy act of 2021 now we will quickly recap the changes first is that there is an increase in upper limit for legal termination of pregnancy The upper limit has been increased from 20 weeks to 24 weeks for certain categories of women. Now the second major change is regarding the requirement of opinion of doctors. That is the opinion of one doctor was needed for the termination of pregnancy up to 20 weeks of gestation and for the termination of pregnancy from 20 weeks to 24 weeks the opinion of two doctors are required. The next major change is regarding the fetuses with substantial abnormalities and finally there is a change in regards to termination of pregnancy due to failure of contraceptive method now both married and unmarried women can have access to termination of pregnancy in case of failure of contraceptive methods up to 20 weeks of gestation and that's all regarding this news article Now we will move on to the next part of our discussion that is the preliminary practice questions. Now look at the first question. Consider the following statements regarding the prototype fast breeder reactor in Kalpakkam. The first statement the reactor is built by Bhavani that is Bharatiya Nabikya Vidyut Nigam Limited. The second statement the reactor use heavy water as coolant. The third statement The reactor does not have control rods since breeding activity requires fast neutrons and you have to find the correct statement A only 
பி ஒன் அண்ட் டூ ஒன்லி சி டூ அண்ட் த்ரீ ஒன்லி அண்ட் டி ஒன் அண்ட் த்ரீ ஒன்லி சி ஹியர் த ஸ்டேட்மெண்ட் ஒன் இஸ் கரெக்ட் பிகாஸ் த ரியாக்டர் இஸ் பில்ட் பை பாவ்னி இட் இஸ் அ ஹோல்லி ஓன் என்டர்பிரைஸ் ஆஃப் கவர்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் இந்தியா அண்டர் த அட்மினிஸ்ட்ரேட்டிவ் கண்ட்ரோல் ஆஃப் டிபார்ட்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் அட்டாமிக் எனர்ஜி இட் வாஸ் எஸ்டாப்லிஷ்ட் வித் த இன்டென்ட் ஆஃப் பில்டிங் அண்ட் கன்ஸ்ட்ரக்டிங் ஃபைவ் ஹண்ட்ரட் மெகா வாட் ஃபாஸ்ட் பிரீடர் ரியாக்டர் இன் இந்தியா நோட் தட் பாவினி வில் பி த செகண்ட் பவர் யூட்டிலிட்டி இன் இந்தியா ஆஃப்டர் த நியூக்ளியர் பவர் கார்பரேஷன் ஆஃப் இந்தியா டு யூஸ் நியூக்ளியர் ஃபியூவல் சோர்சஸ் டு ஜென்ரேட் பவர் ஸோ ஸ்டேட்மெண்ட் ஒன் இஸ் கரெக்ட் and regarding statement 2 it is incorrect see this is an important point please note it the fast breeder reactor uses liquid sodium as coolant and it is the pressurized heavy water reactor that uses heavy water as both coolant and moderator since the question is about the fast breeder reactor it uses liquid sodium as coolant so statement 2 is incorrect and regarding statement 3 it is also incorrect see the reactor does not have the moderator since breeding activity requires fast neutrons but the fast breeder reactor has control rods made of boron carbide see a control rod is a device that is used to absorb neutrons so that the nuclear chain reaction taking place within the reactor core can be slowed down or stopped completely so here the reactor does not have moderator but has control rods so our final answer will be option a one only Now look at the second question. Consider the following statement with reference to urban heat island. Cool roofs can be used to reduce the urban heat island effect. Urban areas with more buildings causes urban heat island. You have to find the correct statement. This is a very simple question. Take it as a quiz question. Find the answer and post it in the comment section. Now we will move on to the third question. Consider the following statements regarding medical termination of pregnancy amendment act 2021. The first statement it aims to regulate the termination of pregnancy or abortion. The second statement according to the act the upper limit for termination of pregnancy is 24 weeks for all women and you have to find the correct statement. See regarding this question the statement 1 is correct. We have seen this in our discussion right. The main aim of the act is to regulate the termination of pregnancy or abortion. And regarding the statement 2 it is incorrect. C according to the act the upper limit for termination of pregnancy is 24 weeks for certain categories of women according to the medical termination of pregnancy rules 2021 these categories include survivors of sexual assault or rape or incest minors and women whose marital status changes during an ongoing pregnancy that means the women who are widowed or divorced during pregnancy or finally this category include women with physical disabilities so this upper limit for 24 weeks is not for all women it is only for certain categories of women so here statement 1 is correct and statement 2 is incorrect so our answer here is option a one only the main question is displayed here write your answer and post it in the comment section If you like the video hit the like button post your comments and share the video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel thanks for watching